Hello, how are you doing? My name is Kachi excited to do a Bible study with you guys here. And I want to speak about uh, this topic here. I want to ask you, what is the gospel of salvation? Many people don't really understand what is the gospel of salvation. Reason being, uh, many people think that we are saved the same way all across the Bible, which is not true. In the Bible, there are so many ways that people are saved. You're saved, uh, there are different gospels, different dispensations. And uh, uh, like we see, for example, during the time of uh, Moses, people were not actually having eternal salvation. It was only remission of sins. After you go and sacrifice, then you could be uh, forgiven of your sins. During the time of, uh, of, uh, of Abraham, we see Abraham was a man of faith. That, that was another different dispensation, a dispensation of grace during that time, the time of Noah as well. The time of the law was a different dispensation. The time right now of the church age, we have another dispensation, which is the dispensation of grace. Then after the church is raptured, we have another gospel, which will be for the time of the tribulation. So people are not saved the same way in, in the Bible. So today I want to ask you, do you know what is the gospel of salvation today? Today, today, we are in the church age, and I believe I'm talking to Gentiles, I'm, I believe I'm talking to people who are not Jews, and even if you're Jews, the Bible says, as long as you believe the gospel of grace, there is no Jew or Gentile with God. So, uh, let me start uh, today's Bible study from the book of Ephesians 1.13. Let's see what the Bible says, Ephesians 1.13. Uh, Ephesians 1.13 Oops, one of my lights here is going down. I don't know why. Excuse for that. Ephesians 1.13, the Bible talks about something here. It, it, it says, um, in, whom also, in, in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed, with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So here we're seeing the Bible telling us very well that after you trusted, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So once you, in Ephesians 1, 13 to 14, once you believe or you trust, you believe, you believe in what? You believe in the gospel. You are sealed, right? Sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. All right? So there is a Holy Spirit who was promised to, to us in the gospel that immediately you believe, immediately you trust the gospel, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And this one is the earnest of our is the earnest of the purchased possession which is the purchased possession us being christians we have been purchased by the blood of jesus christ so we are the earnest this is the holy spirit is the earnest of the purchased possession so now if we understand that we are saved after we believe after we trust is this the same way that people used to be saved back then because there's a big controversy about that uh, whereby many people say that uh, I can be saved whichever way. I can just, you know, the Bible is like a cocktail. I can pick that, pick that, pick that, and then I can be saved whichever way I want. But that is not the truth. That's not the truth. So what is the gospel? The word gospel means to evangelize. The word gospel, gospel, literally means to evangelize. It is a word. It is a word which comes from a, a Greek tongue, which says evan, "evangelio," "evangelio," something like that. Uh, for those who know Greek, you can be able to understand that. So, gospel means to evangelize. But then, there is something else in the gospel. Later, we see so many people using the same word and saying the same word also has another meaning, and the other meaning. It is that it means good news. It also means the good news. 
the gospel also means good news okay so if we see the gospel means good news or is also means to evangelize what are we evangelizing what is the good news that we are talking about here so in the bible we have about seven different different gospels and i think i'll do another video which will speak about the different kinds of gospels that we have in the bible and then you can be able to understand according to the different dispensations that the Bible has put forth. Now, today we are saved by the gospel that Jesus revealed to Apostle Paul. So today, as we, as, as we are here, if you're watching this video before the rapture, we are saved by the gospel which Jesus revealed to Paul. All right? So, what is this gospel that Jesus revealed to Paul? I want us to go to that gospel which Jesus revealed to Apostle Paul. So this gospel is found in 1 Corinthians. All right, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it talks about something. It talks about how it has five different parts. Two, three, four, and five. We have how Christ died. Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again according to, I'll just abbreviate there, to uh, scriptures. Right? So those are the five different parts of which show what the gospel is. We can go there and read together so that we can be able to understand. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 1 through 4. This is the gospel which was revealed to Apostle Paul. Now Paul says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which was preached unto you. So there are various things which this gospel entails uh, about this gospel. All right. There are various things that you have to understand from this gospel. I don't know what's up today with lights. Uh, just give me a second. This, this is a gospel which uh, has about five different parts, like I've shown you. And let's see about the gospel, what it entails. The Bible tells, tells us, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. So the gospel you have, it has to be preached. Preached. Uh, preached to you. All right. For you to get the gospel, it has to be preached to you, uh -huh. which you also have received. So you have to receive the gospel, receive the gospel, you have to receive the gospel, and then which you have received and wherein you stand. So you have to stand in the gospel, stand in the gospel. You have to stand in the gospel. And then there's another thing. And wherein you stand, verse 2, by which also you are saved. So you are saved by the gospel. You are saved by the gospel. So you have to understand that you are saved by this gospel. Then another thing. Uh... If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, so you have to keep in memory what is preached. Keep, keep in memory. All right? For you to be saved by this gospel, you have to keep it in memory, okay? Keep it in memory. What I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. So you have to believe truthfully. You don't have to believe in vain. Believe. Now, why does the Bible say believe truthfully? 
It tells us not to believe in vain because there are people who are called the Pharisees who used to believe, but they believed with their minds, not from their hearts. The Bible tells us very well, you know, Jesus was, was talking to the Pharisees and he was telling them, uh, these people honor me with their lips and their mouth, but their heart is far from me. They only believe me from their lips, from their head. They only believe me from their mind, from their thoughts, but is not in their hearts. Why? Because for you to be able to believe the gospel, you have to understand one thing. You have to understand the gospel. You have to hear the gospel. You have to understand something that you have understood, it will get into your heart. But something that you have not understood, it will not get into your heart. You see the Pharisees and the scribes, they use all the time. Actually, the scribes used to write the, 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 the word of God, the the words of the prophet Isaiah, those are the guys who used to uh, make copies and all those kind of things. So they, they had read different over and over the word of God, but they never had understood it. Because if they had understood the same, they could not have killed Jesus. They could not have said Jesus is not the Messiah because it was already written. The prophet Isaiah, the prophet Daniel, all those Jeremiah, Zechariah, the Hosea, they, they already spoken about Jesus coming. And uh, for them, these guys, because they understood Jesus, they understood the, the word of God from their mind, not from their heart, then that is why Jesus said, they hear and proclaim me with their lips, but their, their heart, sorry, their heart is far from me. So you have to believe truthfully, not believing only in your mind. Let's continue. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, I delivered unto you first which I also received. So, you have to uh, be delivered, uh, have the gospel delivered, which was receive. Uh, you have to receive the gospel, sorry. So, you have to receive the gospel. Paul is saying he received, okay? He already received it. So, also you, you have to receive the gospel. Uh -huh. So, he delivered to us the gospel, which... Uh, he had also received how that Christ died now you see there's one major word here and that's why I always say it's very important for you to have a King James Bible because King James Bible is the only Bible which says this word how 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 Jesus died all right you have to understand how Jesus died because without understanding how Jesus died then there's no gospel how did Jesus die Jesus died a very bloody death, all right? Jesus died a very, very bloody death. He shed his own blood here, all right? He shed his blood, a lot of blood, because the Bible tells us one thing. Without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. As a matter of fact, uh, the Bible tells us in Leviticus, the book of Leviticus, um, I think it's 15, somewhere there. Um, it tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given you the blood to make atonement for your souls. So if you're making atonement for your soul with the blood, if Jesus could not have shed his own blood, then there could be no forgiveness of sins because there could not be no blood to uh, signify that let's say for example if jesus could have died out of heart attack or maybe he was thrown in the galilee uh, in the lake or maybe he died in river jordan by drowning or something like that there could mean be no salvation today why because there there could be, uh, there could not be any blood which was poured because blood is the main thing which consists is, is the biggest recipe or the biggest component when it comes to salvation. There have to be blood, all right? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood and any man who sins, then blood has to be poured out. And that's why in the Old Testament, we see the time of Moses, the time of Abraham, the time of even as, as early as Abel and Cain, they, they had to be shedding of blood whenever there was something that you want to sacrifice to God. Whenever they wanted to be forgiven of sins or they needed to communicate with God, they had to be blood shed. So it's very important to see that word, how, how that Christ died, 
how that Christ died, he shed his blood. So for those people who just say, I believe in Christ and that's it, then it's very hard. Getting saved, it's, it's very difficult. You cannot be saved by just saying, I believe in Jesus. Then where is the blood? You see, this is the kind of gospel that is being preached nowadays of the bloodless gospel. And I think I'll talk about that later on in another different video. So let's continue. Uh, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. All right. So you have to believe truthfully how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So you have to understand one thing. He did it for us. All right. He did it for us. This is very important, understanding that Jesus did not just die for no reason. He died for you and me. He died for you. He did not just die because any other person dies. No, the main reason he died, it is because of you. So you have to understand that part in depth, all right? And then you have to understand it's according, according to scriptures, all right? Why do you have to understand that is according to the scriptures? Because of one thing. The scriptures are in, were inspired by God. God gave the scriptures. God gave the word, uh, his word, which is holy. So if you believe the scriptures, it means you believe God the Father. If you believe that Jesus did it for us, then you have received your salvation. You have received the salvation of Jesus Christ. Let me just come here. If you believe that Christ died, all right you believe that jesus was god manifest in the flesh and you believe that jesus was here literally and he came and he died all right so it means you believe in god the son if you believe it was for our sins it shows that you believe that jesus did not just die any other ordinary death he died for a certain cause and that cause was you to be saved and was buried why buried? Because Jesus was buried as the, the unleavened, he was the unleavened bread. He was the sinless person. He became sin so that we can be able to get his righteousness. So he, he was made sin for us. He was buried as the unleavened bread, the person who was sinless. You see, bar, bar, uh, being buried is only supposed to be for the sinners. But him, he was buried and he was sinless. And this is the same reason why he could be able to go down there and defeat death and come back up. All right. So if you believe that, you also believe that Jesus was the unleavened bread and then he rose again. If you believe that Jesus rose again, then you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one who is going to raise us up when the time comes. If we die, he's the one who's going to raise us up or if... Um, or if uh, maybe we are, uh, the rapture comes, then we are going to go up by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus is going to raise you. So you believe in the God, the Holy Spirit. And according to the scriptures, you believe God the Father because he's the one who inspired every word in the Bible. So when you believe all this, that is how you will be saved. This is the right dispensation of gospel which was given to Apostle Paul about how, how, the message is how, all right? How Jesus died, all right? How, okay? Or literally we can say what, what Jesus did for us, all right? What Jesus did for us. And I want to clarify this because there are so many people who don't really understand the difference between what and 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 who Jesus is message okay now I want to clarify something here uh, maybe uh, let me let me rub here so that I can be able to explain better because I don't have a lot of uh, room uh, now I want to explain to you for those people who always say uh, you see I'm only saved by believing in who Jesus is as long as I believe Jesus is, is, is the Messiah, then I'm saved. That's a very different dispensation of gospel. So now, I want to show you something. The Peter and the early apostles, they preached something. So this is Peter. Peter and the early apostles. 
all right? Peter and the early apostles preached a certain message. And Peter, they preached about, they, they spoke about various things. Number one, they talked about Christ died. They said Christ died. Number two, they also say that he was buried. They said he rose again. For according to scriptures. All right. So this is what Peter preached. He preached that Christ died, he was buried, he rose again according to the scriptures. But there is one thing that they never used to talk about here. They never talked about he did it for our sins. Okay. Why is it so? Peter was speaking about Jesus having died. Hey, you killed the Messiah. You killed this guy. He was buried. He rose again. The scriptures can prove this. But there is one thing that he did not speak about, which is called he did it for our sins. And I want to prove it to you right now here. Uh, you see, Paul was preaching a different gospel. I've just shown you in the other side that he preached that Christ died, was buried, rose again, according to the scriptures. Uh, but Paul speaks about Jesus dying for our sins. And uh, I want us to go uh, just straight ahead so that you can be able to see this. Uh, the good news which Jesus brought in, you see, like I told you, the gospel means the good news. So Peter had good news and Paul had good news. But now the good news that Peter had was one thing that Jesus was. Uh, let me write here. This is Peter. Peter and then we have Paul. All right. So Peter preached one thing. He said the good news, good news was that Jesus is the Messiah. All right. You guys, you know what? The Messiah, the Messiah rose again. You, he died, he was buried, he rose again. The Messiah rose again. So the good news is that Messiah did, did not only die, but he rose again. So Peter was literally preaching a message of who Jesus is, all right? He was preaching a message of who Jesus is. And I want us to go, uh, let's read here. <clears throat> Let me show you something here. I want us to go to the book of Romans 2.16 and we see the comparison. Because here, Peter was speaking a lot of who. And Paul was speaking a lot of what, what happened, what, what Jesus did. All right. Paul was speaking about what Jesus did and Peter was speaking about who Jesus is. And uh, even Paul tells us here in the Bible, let's read uh, Romans 2.16. He tells us very well how people will be judged. Because for those people who think that they'll be judged according to understanding who Jesus is, the Messiah, Jesus is the Messiah, then you are going to miss something. Because there's a different message which Paul was speaking and is what he was revealed to by God. So Romans 2 verse 16, uh, Paul says, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Why is Jesus saying that according to my gospel? Because there are other types of gospel in the Bible. There is this gospel, there is this gospel, there is this gospel. Even Jesus himself when he was here, he was preaching the message of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus was saying, hey, believe the kingdom of, uh, be believe the kingdom is here. Believe in me, believe in me. I am the Messiah. I'm the prophesied Messiah who was prophesied to you. So Jesus was not speaking the gospel that is for this dispensation. He was giving the gospel of the kingdom. So actually I should write here, Peter and Jesus. All right. Jesus and Peter, they were speaking the message of the, the gospel of the kingdom. All right. They were speaking the gospel of the kingdom. And Paul was preaching 
the gospel of grace. There is two distinct differences about the gospel of the kingdom and gospel of grace. The gospel of grace is Christ crucified. The gospel of the kingdom is Christ as the Messiah. Hey, the Messiah is here. Believe in him and you'll be saved. The gospel of grace is what Jesus did for you. Let's go to Let's go to Romans 6 uh, 16:25. Romans 16 uh, verse 25. Paul says, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Why was Paul talking about a revelation of a mystery? All right. This is a mystery which was kept hidden. The mystery which was kept hidden is that there was grace. Grace has always been there all through the years, but people have never understood. But they, there was another different gospel. When has grace been before? Before the law, there was grace. For example, let me explain to you. During the time of Abraham, we see the Bible says that Abraham was a man of faith. He found, he, he, he found favor with God because favor is what? Grace, because of his faith. During the time of Noah, Noah found grace with God, all right? Grace was there before the law. And after the law came in, then people, is like grace was suppressed a little bit, and people now concentrated much more on the law. But grace had been there. And this is the mystery which was uh, revealed later on to Apostle Paul about the gospel of grace. There are also other different uh, mysteries that Paul was revealed to, the mystery of the rapture, the mystery of... Uh, the indwelling of Christ, us being in Christ and Christ being in us. There are so many other mysteries. I'll speak about them. There are about seven different mysteries. But right now I'm talking about the mystery of grace. Grace had been there all the time. It's only that people had not known. And this is what Paul was revealed to. And he was told people should believe now in what Jesus did. What Jesus did specifically that. All right. Let's see it. 2 Timothy 2.8. 2 Timothy 2.8. 2 Timothy 2 verse 8. Mm. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. So Paul is still insisting Jesus was raised from the dead according to my gospel. So this gospel of grace is the gospel which we are supposed to be speaking about. We should be preaching about Christ crucified, not Christ as the Messiah. So for those people who always come here and say, right now, if I see, uh, I meet so many people, I always ask them, hey, do you know the gospel? They tell me, yeah, as Jesus, Jesus, I believe in Jesus and that's it. I know I'm saved. No. You just believe in Jesus as the Messiah? Is that the gospel of today? No. The gospel of today is the gospel of grace. You believe in what Jesus did for you, not who Jesus was. This was the message for the Jews. Alright? This was the message for the Jews. But many people get confused with this and they end up believing in this gospel of the kingdom instead of gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. The, the grace which was revealed to Paul by Jesus Christ, and they end up losing uh, and not being saved, all right? Mm -hmm. Let me show you something here. Galatians, uh, Galatians, I don't know if I went ahead of myself here. Yeah. Okay, Galatians 2, verse 1 to 2. Let's go there. Let me show you something here. Galatians 2. Verse 1 to 2, verse 1 to 2. Listen here. Then, this is Paul talking about this. Then, 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest, and, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. So Paul, Paul says here, after 14 years, he went back to the Jews to go and speak to them the gospel 
of grace to go and tell them, hey guys, we have been preaching this message of uh, of uh, the kingdom. Hey, who Jesus is, the Messiah, the Messiah. But now, guys, we need to change up. There's another gospel here which God has revealed to me and I want to tell you about this gospel, which is the gospel of grace. Christ crucified. So he goes back after 14 years to go and and tell them the gospel that he preached. Which gospel is this? Because Peter was preaching this gospel, which is the gospel of the kingdom. All right? Let's continue here. Uh, so I believe, I believe after he told them this, now that's the time that they also changed from believing and uh, teaching the other gospel of uh, uh, Acts 2.38. That is uh, the gospel which is, uh, repent and be baptized you see this time the only way you could receive the holy spirit was by water all right you had to get inside water so water was the only way you could be able to get the holy spirit but now here in the gospel of grace we have seen in ephesians ephesians 1 verse 13 that after you trust after you trust all right after you trust not after you get inside the water. After you trust, you get the gift of the Holy Spirit. Immediately the Holy Spirit comes inside you. But here it used to be, unless you get inside the water, that's the only way you can be able to get the Holy Spirit. That is the gospel uh, which was preached in the Acts. That was the 2.38, if I'm not wrong, yes. Acts 2.38. This was the gospel of water. But now here we see another gospel, which is you get the Holy Spirit by trusting, not by getting inside the water. And this is the same thing that Paul went to tell uh, the early apostles in uh, Galatians 2 uh, verse 1. He, he went back after 14 years, 14 years of preaching to the Gentiles, going to the Gentiles and preaching different places. He, he went back and told them, hey guys, there's another thing that God revealed to me. So now stop preaching this. Start preaching about trusting. Start preaching about Jesus, what he did for us. All right. So that's very, very important to understand that. And uh, when you understand that, you will be able to understand what the gospel of salvation right now is. Because so many people think that because I've been saved, because I was, I got inside water and came out, now I have been saved. I have the Holy Spirit because of getting water. And especially in the Pentecostal churches, this one is taught so, so, so much. Get inside water, get inside water, and you'll get the Holy Spirit. The Bible is very clear about trusting and about how you get the holy spirit and baptism right now is by faith baptism is by faith as a matter of fact let's let's go to colossians let's go to colossians uh, 2 colossians 2 uh, let me check the verse 2 11 12 colossians 2 11 to 12 it tells you that baptism is by faith. All right? It's by faith. Baptism right now is by faith. Let's, let's read. Colossians 2, verse uh, 11 to 12. In whom also you are circumcised, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Why is circumcision important? Because the only way that somebody could get uh, to uh, would become a child of god back then he had to be circumcised like the jews had to be circumcised because it is a law which was given to go uh, by god to abraham abraham was told for your people for your for your for your household to be different from the other of uh, the gentiles and the, the heathens then everybody from your family from your tree has to be circumcised that is a way of distinct making distinction between your seed and the heathens they have to be circumcised all right so anybody who was an heathen here and he wanted to become uh, to to be saved or to to join in this family of abraham he had to be circumcised that's the only way that you could be able to get in here so but now we are seeing Another story about this circumcision. In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So, the circumcision of Christ 
is which is what is giving us this. We are being circumcised by faith with Jesus Christ. And let's see uh, verse 12. Buried with him in baptism. We are buried with who? With Jesus in baptism. Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. So you are buried with him and you are risen with him through the operation of God. So it's by faith. Baptism right now is by faith. It's not by getting inside the water. You see there's a clear difference. This is the message of the kingdom. This is the gospel of grace. So unless you understand that, it will be very, very difficult for you. So let's see. Uh, let's see about what Jesus was preaching. Because I want you to tie the message of Jesus and Peter so that I can be able to show you. It was all about speaking who Jesus is, not what what Jesus did. Remember here, even Jesus had not died. So when Jesus was preaching, he could not be able to preach, hey, believe in my death, burial, and resurrection. No, he could not preach that because even him, he had not died, all right? So he was preaching definitely another message. He was speaking another message, and that is the gospel of the kingdom. He was saying about the kingdom, the millennial kingdom that he was to start here on earth is the message that he was speaking about. And we even see uh, uh, okay, let me let me not get ahead of myself. Let let's let's see here. John four twenty five. John. John four verse uh, twenty five. Listen, this is the 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 the, the woman on the uh, at the well. Eh? The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, That uh, I that speak unto you, uh, unto you, I am he. Why is Jesus saying that I am he? Is This woman is waiting for the Messiah. She has already heard about the Messiah will be coming. But now Jesus tells her, hey, I, I that speaks right now, I am he. I am who? The Messiah. So he's speaking about who he is, the Messiah. The prophesied Messiah is me. I am here. So you see, Jesus is trying to explain who he is, the message of the kingdom. The Messiah who is supposed to come and set up the kingdom is already here. It is me, all right? Let's see John 8, 21. John 8, 21. All right? John 8, uh, 21 to 24. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and you shall seek me. And you shall seek me, and I shall die uh, and sh sorry, then Jesus said again unto them, I go my way, and you shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Where I am going, you cannot come. Then Jesus uh, then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he said, Whither I go, ye come not. So they're asking, So you, you, you guy, you're telling us that where you're going, we cannot come. Are you going to kill yourself? Because the only place we cannot come is in in after death you know verse 23 and he said unto them you are from beneath and i am from above you are of this world and i am not of this world i said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins for if you believe not that i am he you shall die in your sins all right so jesus is telling them if you don't believe i am he who the messiah if you don't believe i am he the messiah you will die in your sins you see jesus is insisting if you believe i'm the messiah then you will not die in your sins but if you believe i am the messiah you see you see if you don't believe you'll die if you'll believe you will not die so jesus is insisting so much about who he is his message is about hey i am the messiah i am the messiah i am the messiah and you even see very well during that time when jesus uh, had started preaching uh, from the synagogue and he spoke the message from prophet Isaiah whereby he was saying uh, uh, the spirit of God has come upon me and then I'll prophesy and then they heal the sick and, and all that and then he told them hey guys this message has been fulfilled today this prophecy has been fulfilled today we know what those guys wanted to do they wanted to kill him because why these guys did not want the Pharisees did not want to accept that the Messiah has come because they would lose their power and you see the, the, the teachers of the law and the religious leaders they did not want to be kicked out of power and then now all people are believing in jesus so they say the only way now is to deny that this guy is 
he's uh, the Messiah. So let's let's see that. John seven twenty five. John seven verse uh, twenty five. All right. Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is this not he whom they seek to kill? You see, he's saying, Is this not the guy that we want? Uh, that they want to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly. And they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? You see, what, they are, what is happening here, they are trying to talk about, is he not the Messiah? Is he not this guy? There is no place where the blood is mentioned here. This is a totally different message speaking about the Messiah. Is this not the Messiah? Is he not the one? Is he not the guy that we have been told over the scriptures all the time? And they really were were agitated about the same and they want to kill him. Let's see uh, verse 28 to 30. From verse 28. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, You both know me, and you know where I am right now, because Nikoapa. And I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom you know not. But I know him, for I am uh, from him, and he hath sent me. Then they sought to take him out, but... But no man laid its uh, hands on him because his hour was not yet come. So these guys, they have been told, hey, you know me, you see me because I am here. But you don't know the one who sent me. So Jesus is being sent as who? As the Messiah. He's being sent as the Messiah. So if you believe Jesus was sent as the Messiah, then you are talking about the gospel of the kingdom. You, he's the Messiah of where? The Messiah was to come and establish the kingdom. So this is a very different message for those people who think that this is the message that which gets you saved. And I'll tell you at the end of the video, just uh, keep, keep holding with me here. I'll tell you why this message was preached. Because this message was preached for a certain purpose. And without understanding that purpose, you'll always be in the dark. You'll always be believing in a different gospel. Now, let's see... Uh, about Peter. What was Peter speaking about during his messages? All right. I want first to show you what message was Peter revealed to. What message was Peter revealed to? Because Paul was revealed a different gospel. Peter was revealed a different gospel. I want to show you which gospel was Peter revealed to. Matthew 16, 13 to 17. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew 16... Um, 16, 13 uh, to 17. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? So Jesus is asking, hey, who, who, who do people say that I am? Okay. And they said, some say that uh, you are John the Baptist, some Elias, some others, Jeremiah, or, or one of the prophets. Verse 15, he said unto them, but whom do you say that I am? In the verse 16, listen now, it's Peter speaking. Eh? Peter comes in. And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are who? The Christ. What does the word Christ mean? What does the word Christ mean? Christ means the anointed one. All right. So Christ, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And let's see the second, uh, the, the, the next verse there, down there. Verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So who revealed that Christ is the, uh, that Jesus is the Christ? It is the power of God. God. God revealed, all right? God revealed to Peter, all right? He revealed to Peter that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the anointed one, all right? So the message to Peter was very clear that who Jesus is. So he was revealed to who, who, all right? Who Jesus is. He was not revealed another different gospel. He was revealed to 
who Jesus was. So that is the thing and that is the mind of Peter all through his sermons and all through when he was preaching. And I'll show you where he also changed and now started believing in another different thing, another different gospel after it came through. I'll show you. Now here, Peter has already understood that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the anointed one. He's the Christ. All right. Remember one thing. Believing in Jesus is very okay, but just knowing Jesus is, uh, is, is God, does that save you? Does that really save you, just believing that Jesus is God and full stop? Does that really save you? No, believing in Jesus is God, just saying, yeah, I know there's a guy called Jesus and I know he exists, does that save you? No. Even... The Bible says even the devils believe and tremble. They believe that there is Jesus. They believe there is a man called Jesus. All right? But that does not save you. You're only saved by believing in what Jesus did for you. I believe that he died for my sins. He died. He shed his own blood for me. You know? If you believe that he did it for you, then you are saved. But if you believe that there is just someone called Jesus, and I believe in Jesus... Then that's a very different gospel. That's a very different gospel. Actually, it's a gospel of another different dispensation, which I'll speak about maybe on a later uh, time. So now, one thing I'd like to tell you about is that uh, Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Mark, Luke and John, they are still parts of the uh, Old Testament. I know you may wonder why, why am I saying that these are still part of the Old Testament. It's because the Bible tells us very well in Hebrews 9.16. For where a testament is, there must also be the necessity of the death of the testator. So all this time, Jesus is still here on earth. He's still here preaching on earth. So how could there be that now this one, the message that he's speaking, is a message of grace. No, Jesus was preaching another different gospel. Why? He was preaching another gospel. He was not preaching the gospel of grace like right now the way we have because he had not died. And until the death of Jesus Christ, who is the, the testator, until Jesus dies on the cross, then there cannot be... The testament cannot start until Jesus dies, literally dies and sheds his own blood. Then the testament cannot start. It can only start when he dies. And in all these books, he has not died yet. All right. So he dies somewhere around the book of Acts. And we see the ministry of the early apostles and the, the Peter preaching still about Jesus. Hey, you have just killed Jesus. So they are speaking about the message of who Jesus is. And I want to show you very well. Let me uh, show you here. Mm. So you see, the Bible is still talking about Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus himself and his message, and also the message of Peter and the early apostles. I insist much about who Jesus is. And I want to continue showing you John 1, John 1, 12. John uh, 1, John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. All right? You see, Jesus is saying, it is being spoken here that whoever believed on his name, they were given the power, the power to become the sons of God. Is that how you get saved today? Is that how you become the son of God by just believing on the name of Jesus? No. You have to believe in the gospel, where is the gospel here? You have to believe in the gospel of grace. Jesus died for your sins. But just believing that uh, the name of Jesus, then you can't be saved at this moment here at the dispensation of grace. All right? So you have to really, really understand this. Let me also show you something else. John 3, 18. John 3, verse uh, 18. John 3, 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth on uh, not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Believing in the name. So you see here, there was a lot of emphasis on the name. Alright? Emphasis on the name. 
But in this dispensation of grace, there is emphasis on what? The blood. All right? Here there is emphasis on the blood of Jesus Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. But here is believe on the name. So where is the blood here in the name? This one means there is a, a very huge, there is a very huge, uh, breakdown. I mean, these are different dispensations. This is another different dispensation. So you, the only way you can be saved here is by believing the blood of Jesus to, 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 to um, justify you of your sins. But here, it's all about the name. It's all about what? Uh, who? Sorry. It's all about who Jesus is. Here is all about what? All right. What Jesus did. So you see, there's a big, big difference. And you have to understand it very clearly. Let's continue. Uh, John 2.23. John uh, 2.23. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. All right. So he's still insisting what? His name. Believed in his name. Okay. Let's see another one. John 20. Uh, 2031 John 20 uh, 31 20 verse 31 but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is Christ believe that Jesus is Christ the son of God and that believing you might have life through his name right now can you have life through his name or through what Jesus did for you you see, here he's insisting about life through his name. All right? Life through his name. But here we get life from believing in what Jesus did. His, his shedding of blood. All right? Shedding of blood gave you life. But here is life through his name. Believing him as the Messiah. But here is believing in what Jesus did for you, all right? Let's go to, let's, let's try and see a very different, uh, uh, let's try and see what exactly was Peter preaching in the first, first early days. Peter preached something, and I think I had spoken about this a little bit uh, back in my message. Acts 2.38 Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, Peter is saying, Repent and be baptized. So, there is repent. Alright. And, you see there is repent and be baptized. What does this one tell you? This one is the uh, repenting there is a faith plus work all right you have to repent you know turn out from what you're doing from believing in idols to believing in the true God have faith in the true God okay and do something you have to be baptized get inside water are we saved by faith plus work today no we are saved by faith only all right right now we are saved by faith only we are not saved by faith plus works so if you believe you're saved by faith plus some work something that you need to do then you're saving yourself it's like jesus saving you on one end and then you're saving yourself on the other end so you have you, you don't have to be saved by faith plus some work, something that you have to do. It's only faith only, faith only, faith only. And the Bible insists about that. So, why? Why was the whole aspect of being baptized, being put inside the water? Why, why was water important? Water. Back then. I think I've spoken about that. But John baptized people in water so that... Uh, he can make way, they can make way for the coming of the Messiah. So getting inside the water was a sign of saying, I want to get ready for the Messiah. The Messiah is coming and uh, we have been given instructions. For us to show that we have accepted the Messiah, we have to get inside the water. Number one, we'll be forgiven our sins. It was baptism. People were baptized into salvation. Are you baptized today into salvation? No. 
Salvation is by faith, is not by being baptized into salvation. The message of John was, come here, I baptize you into salvation. When you are baptized in water, it was a way that showing that, hey, I am ready, I am clean. I am clean waiting for the Messiah and also my sins have been forgiven. Because this time when John was baptizing, there was no death or burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So how would death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ be able to save people at this time? No. There was a very different gospel. That was a very different gospel. Alright. So we see something else which is uh, starting to come here. In the Acts 3 verse 6. Acts 3 verse 6, then Peter said, silver and gold I have none, but such I have, uh, but such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You see here, Jesus is insisting one, th I mean, uh, Peter is insisting one thing. I don't have this and this and this and this, but I have the name. I have the name. In the name of Jesus Christ, who I have, that is the only thing that I have right now, the name of Jesus Christ. The whole aspect of the blood and all those it had not yet been uh, revealed to Peter. Peter had not already understood this message. Yes, it, Jesus had already died, but he had not yet understood this message. He was still insisting the name, the name of the Messiah. Who? The name, the Messiah, the Messiah. All right. He was still insisting about, hey, the Messiah, the Messiah, the Messiah, the name, the name, the name, who Jesus is, who, 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 you see, do this, do this. It was all about faith and work. Do something. You have to do something to get saved. All right. Listen, in Acts 4.12, we see also another uh, part, also Peter still insisting, Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none, uh, there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So, are you saved by the name of Jesus? Are you saved by the name? No. Right now, you're saved by the gospel. You're saved by believing and trusting in the gospel. That we, the Bible says, we preach Christ. Christ crucified. Alright? So Christ crucified is what is preached right now. It's not Christ as the Messiah. You see, these are two different messages. And people can get, uh, most of the time, confused about the two messages. You think that you're saved by water. You're saved by getting yourself inside water. Like I said before in a previous video, if you believe water saves you, then you will go to hell wet. At the end of the day, water does not save you. Faith and works does not save you. You are saved by faith alone. Faith in Christ crucified. Faith in the gospel. That is what saves you. Alright? Mm -hmm. let's, let's check more here. Uh, in uh, Acts 2.21. <clears throat> Alright? Acts 2.21. What is being spoken here? 2.21-22. Uh, Acts 2, 21, 22. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Calling upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Listen, he's saying, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And later on down there, the next verse said, ye men of Israel. So saying men of Israel, this one means what? He is speaking to a different kind of people. Are you Israel? No, you're not Israel. You are Gentiles. You're different people here. You're Gentiles. You're not Israel. So this is a message to the Israelites, to the Jews, to a different uh, team of people. All right. So let's see also Acts 3.16. I just want to show you as many Bible verses as possible so that you can be able to understand the difference between the two. Acts 3.16. 3.16. And his name through and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong. Peter is saying, through faith in his name, in the name of Jesus Christ, has made this man strong. Who? Peter. Whom you see and know, yeah, the faith which is uh, by him has given him the perfect soundness in the presence of you all. 
So you see, faith in the name of Jesus Christ, Peter is still insisting. Strength has come by the name of Jesus Christ. The name. The name. He's insisting the name, the name, the name, the name. Why? Because it's very important to understand that and you put it in mind because the name is what was being preached here. Christ the Messiah. Christ the Messiah. The name of Jesus Christ. Let me show you also. There's somewhere where... Uh, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to go to so, so many verses. I, I just want to go straight and also show you. Let, let me show you just maybe a couple of, two of them talking about this side, all right? Acts 2, 36. Acts 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Peter is talking about Christ crucified. Who? Christ crucified, but he's still speaking about him. But he has not said he was crucified for what? Here we see Paul is being told why Jesus was crucified. He was revealed the reason why Christ was crucified. Here it was you crucified your Messiah. But here Paul says Jesus was crucified for our sins. So there's one part which comes here, a, a, a strong mystery which comes here, which is now the whole aspect of Christ being crucified, it was for our sins. But here Peter is saying, you crucified the Messiah. And if you believe that the Messiah you, is the one you crucified and you repent and be baptized in water, you'll be saved. All right? The Messiah, water, be saved, do some faith and work. But here is, hey guys, you, the Messiah was crucified, yes, we don't deny it. Jesus was crucified, but he was crucified for our sins. That's the main difference between here and here. And if you believe, immediately when you believe here, you get the Holy Spirit. You don't need to go inside the water, okay? You gain salvation here by believing in Jesus Christ, what he did for you, okay? Acts 5.29 Acts 5.29, still Peter uh, explaining, 5.29, mm -hmm. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him that him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance unto Israel, unto Israel, unto Israel and forgiveness of sins. So you see now he's saying, hey, the Messiah that you crucified and hung on a tree, God has raised him and he has made him the savior unto who? Israel. So believe this Messiah. But he's not talking about the whole death was for our sins. You see, these are different mystery which came in. And I think, I think you're starting to understand what a uh, the Bible is saying here, all right. Now we see around, around uh, the book of Acts nine, uh, about Acts nine. This guy comes up, Paul. Paul is saved around Acts nine somewhere there, and after Paul is saved, things start changing. A big transition is starting to happen. So we we see a transition from this this to this all right there's a transition there's a big transition from this to this all right from preaching hey christ the messiah to preaching what jesus did from who to what we see a transition after paul is saved and uh, now paul comes up with a different message let's see at 13 38 at 13 uh, verse 38, Acts 13, 38 to 39. L listen to what Paul says. Now he goes back to the, uh, after he has been away for a while, he comes back now to the, to the other apostles and then he tells them something. Verse 30, uh, 13, 38. Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. All right, and by him all that believe 
are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So when Paul comes here, he comes with another word here, justified. All right. What does the word justified mean? It literally just means just if I had not sinned. It's literally just like saying just as if I had not sinned. So through the death of Jesus Christ, you are justified. Now, here he said that you are justified. In short, the death of Jesus can... Uh, by the death of Jesus, you are justified from sin. By the death of Jesus, you are justified from sin. You see, here it was believe in the Messiah and then you will be saved. But here the word justification comes in for the first time, which says by his death, you are justified from sin. It literally means that now start believing in what Jesus did for you from his death, from what he did, you have been justified. Are you seeing the difference? From his death, you are justified. And then we see, we see also here, uh, Acts 13, 46, Acts 13, 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of, a, of everlasting life, we turned to the Gentiles. So Paul is saying, hey guys, he's telling the, the, the Jews, it was very necessary that the word of God be spoken to you. But because you never believed in everlasting life, you believed in, hey, the Messiah, uh, the, the Messiah and what he, he did and all that. And you guys actually even denied the Messiah. And you did not believe in everlasting life. No. Paul and the other guys, Paul and, uh, and who? Barnabas. They decided now, let's start moving to the Gentiles. Paul was the first guy who started moving to the Gentiles. Okay. So we see this one happening. So Paul went to preach more to the Gentiles. Not that he did not preach to the Jews. He also preached to the Jews, but he went more to the Gentiles. So there was a big transition which was happening here. And the message that he was preaching to the Gentiles was about what Jesus did. Hey, Jesus died for your sins. Jesus died for your sins. Here is that the Messiah to the Jews, it was all about your Messiah. So the Messiah did not come for for the heathens he did not come to for the gentiles did jesus come for the gentiles no he did not as a matter of fact jesus said i came not only to the i came but to the lost sheep of israel all right i came but to the lost sheep of israel he said i came so that there can be forgiveness of sins uh, for for israel to come and help israelites so that i can become their messiah that that was the main reason so that the Israelites can get salvation. They can get uh, me as their Messiah so that I can establish the kingdom here. So Jesus did not come for any other thing. But when they killed him, the message moved to this side now, to the Gentiles. So it became now, the message is all about what Jesus did. And then it went, the, uh, the Bible says that now... Uh, blindness has come to the Jews until the fullness of the Gentiles. Blindness in part has come to the Jews up to the fullness of the Gentiles. That's how Jesus has been so merciful to us. Because if these guys could have accepted Jesus at that time and started the, uh, the, 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 kingdom, uh, the, the, the kingdom here, right now, that time, then the Gentiles could not have been saved. There could not be salvation for the Gentiles. That could be it. And, you know, but Jesus gave a little bit of blindness to this guy so that we can get fullness of uh, the gospel here. The, we can be able to hear the gospel. And I think that's something which Jesus did with a lot of uh, mercy. And I think is really, really good. Now, uh, I want to show you something here. After all this has happened, then we see... Peter starting to confirm this message, all right? Peter confirms, he confirms this gospel. Peter confirms.
this gospel he says now guys i think we are no longer preaching this message but now this is the gospel which is taking people to uh, salvation so peter confirms it where does he confirm that message let's see in acts 15 7 we know uh, after peter has gone to preach to cornelius and his uh, kindreds god had uh, and uh, revealed himself to Peter and also Cornelius, Cornelius, and then he went to preach to Cornelius. Cornelius was a Gentile. So when he went to uh, preach to them, as he, were, as he was preaching, just before he finishes the preaching and then he tells people now, be, uh, get baptized and then you get the Holy Spirit. Immediately when he was preaching, those guys were filled with the Holy Spirit. So how could they be filled with the Holy Spirit without having entered inside water? If the water was a major component of getting the Holy Spirit. So Peter realizes, hey, these guys have gotten the Holy Spirit without even the water. So, and they have been saved. And Jesus has, God, uh, Jesus has revealed to me about going to preach to, the, to these guys. So I think there's something different. So he, he, he says, and he confirms, now I think we'll also be saved by this gospel. We as the Jews and every other person. And now he also transitions to this gospel. Let's see. Acts 15, 7. Acts 15, verse 7. Peter says, And when there had, had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of gospel and believe. So he's talking about Cornelius. That, hey, you know that the Gentiles by my mouth, I, Peter, they had the gospel and they believed, all right? They had the word of the gospel and believed. So these guys did not hear the gospel and then they were baptized and then they believed. No, they had the gospel and they believed. But yes, we see Cornelius was also baptized in water. But around that time when Cornelius was being baptized by with water, Peter has, had not realized that the Holy Spirit did not come because of the water. He had already come when he was preaching. When these guys immediately they believed they got the Holy Spirit. So yes, he had baptized them in water, but he had not realized this. So now he realizes here and says, The Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of God, gospel, the gospel, uh, the word of the gospel, and believe. And uh, he speaks several things there. But let's see what he says in verse 11. Verse 11, very critical. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Now, why is he saying that we'll also be saved even as they, as the Gentiles? We'll be saved by believing, by faith only. We will not need to get inside the water so that you can be able to get the Holy Spirit. Now, we'll also, we'll, we will also be saved as the Gentiles have been saved by believing only, by faith only. Are you seeing? He is now confirming this message that Paul has already brought in. So that's very important to see this because when you don't see this in that manner, it will be so difficult for you to understand because you'll be thinking that you're saved by believing in Jesus as the Messiah. No, you are saved by believing the gospel of grace, believing this gospel, faith only, not faith plus some works. No, you can be saved by your works. The Bible says, uh, 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 our righteousness is like filthy rags to God. Filthy rags. So it cannot save you in anything. All right. So one thing I like to tell you is that this gospel of grace will end immediately. Immediately the, uh, the rapture happens. When the rapture happens, immediately people go up. All right. Immediately the rapture happens. That is the end of the gospel of grace so if you're watching this video and the rapture has not happened then no it's the this is a gospel which can save you but i'm going to tell you how you're going to be saved after the rapture happens if it has already happened anyway uh, now paul explains very well he says this is the gospel that you every person in the world will be judged i read for you that one earlier and i told you paul saying this is the gospel which every human being who lived in the time of the grace will be judged with. And even insist in Galatians 1, 8. Let's see there. Galatians 1, verse 8. 1, verse 8. He says, Paul says it very clearly. But though we 
or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. He said, if any angel, if we, even if me, Paul, I wake up again and tell you another gospel than the one that we have already told you, or even an angel from heaven, even an angel, preach another gospel. All right? Let him be accursed. Why is he saying like that? Because this is the gospel which will save you during the time of grace. All right? But now, he says that, and he confirms very well that any person or an angel from heaven preaching another gospel, let him be accursed. Now, let me show you something. To prove to you that gospels are different in the Bible, you're not saved the same way. There are different keys of salvation. Jesus is the only way, is the only door, but we have different keys to open the same door, that is Jesus Christ. The different gospels. Let's see Revelation 14, verse 6. Revelation 14, 6. Revelation 14, uh, verse 6. Revelation 14, 6. Uh -huh. It says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Now, why are we having another angel from heaven coming to preach the everlasting gospel? And already Paul has said, if an angel comes from heaven and preaches another gospel, let him be accursed. The reason we are seeing another gospel being preached by an angel is because the rapture has already happened. Revelation, that's the time in the tribulation. So people are not saved the same way by grace. Now they are saved by another gospel, which is called the everlasting gospel preached by an angel. Remember, Paul had said, no angel should preach. But now we have an angel here preaching the everlasting gospel. So, do you see the difference that this time of grace, people are saved differently? This time, people are saved differently? This time, people are saved differently? The time of Moses, people are just uh, they, they were forgiven their sins differently, but there was no justification. You know, justification, Jesus came to bring eternal salvation. Jesus brought eternal. All right? After Jesus died, the salvation that he brought was eternal, forever. So you are forgiven your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins, okay? So it was, salvation was eternal. Before Jesus came, salvation was all about when you sin, you, you, you do your sacrifice, and then you're forgiven your sins up to when? Up to that day, you know? But now, when Jesus came, he came with another different message, all right? So that's very important to understand that. And as I wind up, uh, I like to maybe wind up uh, by showing you two verses. So Peter's gospel was to the Jews. Paul's gospel was to the Gentiles. Very clearly defined. Peter's message was to the Jews. Paul's message was to the Gentiles. And we see that we are Gentiles and we are living during the church age. So this is the gospel of salvation which saves you. The gospel of Paul. The gospel of grace, the gospel of God, this one is also called the gospel of God. It's not this gospel of, uh, it's not this gospel of the kingdom. And let's see that one in Galatians uh, 2, 7. Galatians 2, 7. Galatians 2, verse 7. Listen what it says. Paul is saying here, but contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, the gospel of the uncircumcision, uncircumcision is the Gentiles, okay, was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty to me towards the Gentiles. You see, he's defining and he's saying, now me, mine was mighty towards the Gentiles, but Peter was more so to the circumcision. And finally, let me uh, show you also here. It also shows that Peter later on really understood this gospel and he started preaching this gospel later on, even to the Jews and other people, because the Bible says in Christ Jesus, there is no Jew or Gentile. So where, wherever Peter continued preaching, he had already now started turning from believing Jesus the Messiah to what Jesus 
did. And we can see that on the final verse. Let me show you. In 1 uh, Peter 1 verse 18. 1 Peter 1, 18 to 19. Uh, check here. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by traditions of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as the lamb without blemish and without spot. So Peter has now realized we are saved by the blood of the lamb of God. The blood, what Jesus did. This blood is what saves us, not believing in who Jesus is as the Messiah. The blood is what redeems us. It's not by the works of the Lord. It's not by the things that we do. It's not by water. It's not by these things. These things will not save us right now. But remember something. When grace is over, you remember what I told you? When grace is over, the time of the grace is over, when the rapture happens, then this message now comes back. All right, because the Bible says during the time of tribulation is also called the time of Jacob's Jacob's trouble. All right, so if this time of tribulation is also called the time of Jacob's trouble, who is Jacob? Jacob is Israel. Okay, so this message now comes back again. Hey, Israel, Jesus is your Messiah. He is the one who you kill. He is the one that you don't want to believe in. So the message of Jesus is the Messiah comes in. So this was very important for it to be in the Bible. You know, many people can ask then, if this message was not important to us, why was it in the Bible? It's because God knew the same message will be totally in handy during the time of tribulation. And everything we just taught here will come back again to life after the time of tribulation. And you'll only be saved by doing, by having faith and the works, all right? The Bible tells us, well, during the time of tribulation, you'll be saved by faith plus works, all right? And I can show you that one, just the last thing here. I can show you Revelation 14, verses 12. The Bible says, here is the patience of the saints. Who are these saints? The people in the tribulation. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. So they keep the commandments, they keep the work, the things that they have been told to do. You see, the work, the do, the do, do, do things. They keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. So during the time of tribulation, it will be you will be saved by faith, faith plus works. All right? But now you're saved by faith alone. So thank you very much. I hope uh, you've been able to understand something. I know I've gone a little bit longer, but you... Uh, I hope the message was great. You can share it to somebody so that you can enlighten them. God bless you and have a great, great time.